deep bite models, deep bite models, give two. Yeah. Deep bite? Yeah, yeah. okay, that's right. Lights are good? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Alright. So it's just my hands, me talking, what's happening? It's just your hands. You need space, unfortunately. That's right, I just want to just, oh, there we go, now I can see it. Right? So tell me if I'm on or off the screen, you, or you move it as you go. Uh, yeah. Right. Ready? Yeah. Action. Go. Go. Okay, we're going to discuss how we intrude incisors in the deep bite. Uh, in this particular case, we have a 100% uh, complete bite almost to the palate. I want to intrude these incisors because this patient has a gummy smile, and by intruding, we're reducing the gummy smile as well as we are preventing uh, the upper and lower incisors from uh, hitting the palate. So, one way of starting the case is using an intrusion arch. This intrusion arch can be easily uh, bent, which is the purpose of this uh, video. Uh, the technique was developed by Burstone, it's called a Burstone intrusion arch. It's bent using beta titanium wire or um, uh, TMA. Um, the beta titanium wire is flexible and easy to bend, but it's rigid enough to maintain the intrusion forces. You can't do this with nitai because it won't retain the shape. If you use stainless steel, I find that forces are heavier and of course it's harder to bend. So this uh, is a ortho organizers um, uh, wire. Uh, they call their beta titanium CNA. And the size wire that I'd like to bend this up in is a mid-range rectangular. Mid-range meaning 1425 or 1625 or 1825. 1625 is, is the ideal one for me. Uh, it's uh, quite flexible. And because you're not sliding on this, you're not worried about the increased friction associated with beta titanium. The pliers that you will need will be a Jarabac uh, plier, also known as a half round. And what you will do, you'll get a marker uh, and you'll... Um, thank you. You'll mark the opening of the um, molar tube. So you mark that on one side and then mark it again on the other side. The ideal marker, of course, to use would be uh, a permanent marker rather than a pencil. <laughs> so marking one side of the arch, marking the other side of the arch, then using the uh, Jarabac plier. You can see you've got one round component. On the round component, you bend, and then you bend the loop right round. Now make sure when you bend that the bend is buckle off the wire. Because if it's lingual, of course it won't go in the molar tube. That's one of the common errors I see people make. The amount of intrusion is determined by this angle. That's excessive uh, amount of intrusion. It's about 45 degrees. What we want is about 20 degrees of intrusion. So, more like that. Now, if I just put this on this model and we place it in front of the molar, you can see how powerful the intrusion force is already. People ask, do you place this directly into the um, brackets or do you use a piggyback technique? Well, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. You can place it directly in the brackets and that's why I don't use a big size TMA wire. Um, particularly if you've already done some levelling and aligning. But if you haven't done levelling and aligning, you could have a base wire, which is doing your levelling and an aligning, um, and then you could have this as a piggyback wire, and you tie the intrusion arch to the main wire at one point contact. Well, that would mean, though, you'd need a molar tube that has two openings, a double molar tube. Right? Um, so very simple to bend. You can see that took just a matter of seconds. If you want to buy these preformed, you can, but then of course you have to keep a large inventory. At every visit when the patient comes back in, I will check the amount of activation. If it needs more activation, it's very simple. It's removed from the mouth, and then again using the half round end, you can just open that angle. As you open the angle, you get the activation. So if I just bend it on the other side just uh, for completeness, remember the main thing is to find the mark because if it's not, then it's going to be asymmetric because it goes in the mouth. And I've lost my mark here, but let's assume it's that one. Uh, and bend it always on the buckle. 
you don't bend it on the buckle, the problem that you will have is that you won't be able to... Oops, you know, I've been it the wrong way around. Well, that just shows you how you can use this in the lower arch <laughs> to, um, uh, to intrude uh, the teeth. Um, here's one I made earlier today. Um, so by having uh, both on that side and by placing them in the mouth, it's then it just, just uses... Now, this is obviously not bent to this size, but if you can have a look at how much intrusion you can achieve, it, it's quite a lot. And uh, it's general forces. People ask when you get root resorption uh, with the TMA, and particularly if you're using uh, uh, lighter intrusion uh, vector of force, uh, I don't see an increased chance of root resorption. Whereas I used to see that in uh, heavy stainless steel, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's 10 minutes? No, that's five. 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 Wow, that's a.